thank you very much for uh, uh, your uh, uh, welcome and uh, it's my pleasure to be a part of this uh, event here while my topic today is going to be uh, the next generation of digital forensic laws uh, i have actually yes this this topic has both uh, the significance of uh, international as well as uh, our indian standards what we are currently practicing while in india the current situation of digital forensics we actually have got uh, uh, very very limited uh, discussions about the digital forensic laws so far one is the information technology act which was uh, passed in 2000 and there uh, and, and its various amendments uh, you know which has happened so far and second thing is the indian evidence act where we also discuss about the admissibility of the electronic evidence which which would require digital forensic aspects and in the same uh, indian evidence act we talk about uh, you know uh, the admissibility of the opinions given by the people who are recognized as the digital exam the examiner of digital evidences and third we are uh, now yet to see the personal data protection bill so how is how, how are these three actually having any scope any impact on our digital uh, uh, forensic practices is what i am going to be touching upon with my presentation well why do we actually require a digital forensics uh, you know the guidelines or the law because the technology is changing very rapidly and very fast and because the technology is upgrading every day because the technology what we using today is actually outdated by tomorrow morning so one time we call it as upgradation but actually it is outdated one i mean outdating the older technology we are trying to upgrade to the new technologies so the need for the practice for the digital forensics and the laws what we are trying to discuss because forensics is limited activity in the laboratory the forensic experts may put in best of the best efforts to you know bring in the uh, good findings and good uh, uh, you know observations in their respective uh, uh, evidences but when we don't have a supportive law for that when we do when we actually lack the provisions under the law to present the evidences before the court and the best of the best efforts put in by the expert sitting in the laboratory will go for a uh, waste so why we require the digital uh, forensic in a related law is because the technology is gr growing very fast and it is changing very rapidly and we actually are witnessing wide range of scientific and technical challenges i mean yesterday since yesterday we have been discussing about various challenges for the investigation and uh, see while while only in the recent days uh, while in 2000 uh, uh, the information technology act was passed under it act especially section 79a that gives a provision as to who can be the person who can be called as a digital examiner of evidences so only in the recent years okay the government of india notified few agencies who can be called as the uh, examiner of electronic evidences under the provisions of section 79a as per the indian scenarios concern while so far from 2000 to the recent year when it was actually notified so we actually did not have any people who are actually notified as the examiner of electronic evidences uh, you know and without even that particular section 79 a experts we have been dealing with the n number of cases and n number of cases has gone before the courts for the adjudication so wide range of scientific and technical challenges also includes one is the passing of the law second is the implementation of the law so both are actually very very important so at this point in time there is no specific law which actually covers the full scope uh, of the digital forensic aspects which means there are there are few implied meaning matlab see it only says uh, what kind of evidences are admissible and uh, how the electronic evidences can be authenticated but when we go a slightly deep because what has been enacted right now 
is good to begin with. When I say, uh, unless and until we had such laws, we did not even have to discuss about all these things. But whatever has been enacted right now, there is some gap and there is a lot of uh, you know, uh, speculations and which we need to investigate, which we need to get and discuss in, uh, as a digital examiners of the evidences. Because the law only gives certain provisions, but the digital forensic experts, when we look at the provisions of this particular section, we have a lot of unanswered questions in this. So what we need is that we need to involve in this kind of discussions and to find a solution and get ourselves matured about how the investigations can be done on the digital forensic aspects. As everybody knows, there's a huge gap between the technology and the law implementation. By the time we understand today's technology, and by the time we start doing something about a regulation or a rules or a law, by the time the law is enacted, this technology would have already changed. Okay, so there is no uh, balance between the present technology and the present law. See, both are there, but it has got a huge gap between one and another. And one important thing which we need to understand here is that domination of aggregators or a non-cooperation for the investigators, because it, it is not the first instance, and there has been repeated instances where the people like you know the Facebook, Google, or you know any such social media aggregators, they actually don't cooperate for the investigations of the agencies. There has been many cases, many reports where the aggregators do not actually oblige including the court orders. So I'll discuss about such uh, cases just after this slide, which in this slide, what I want to uh, uh, discuss is that, yes, while the social media or different companies have got, uh, are actually termed as aggregators and they dominate one particular area of uh, digital domain, they actually don't have effective law implementation and the laws today do not actually uh, give such a provision where the aggregators can be strictly held liable for delay in the whole investigation. So, including the FBI, including the US federal courts, the courts have failed to effectively implement and bring these kind of aggregators in the law books. I'll discuss about the case. While the privacy has been declared as one of the fundamental rights today, and how the privacy on the social media can be ensured, and to investigate if there was a breach of privacy or not, we are discussing about the digital evidences and to authenticate the digital evidences, definitely we are using digital forensics. And if in, if in case we don't have supportive laws for such appreciation of the evidences, the whole purpose of enactment of the law or such judgments which actually have said privacy is the fundamental right, it's fine. See, uh, I understand privacy is my fundamental right, but how do I prove that there is a breach of my privacy on the digital world? So that process without the suitable laws will take a very exorbitant time. And by the time the justice is, see in, in, in the law, we usually have this quote, justice delayed is justice denied. So we are discussing about the timely investigations and the present law is not actually supporting such timely investigations, and that is when we need the next generation of the law which actually supports the digital forensics and digital investigation aspects. Suppose, uh, while most of the audience here from India, and we keep discussing about uh, the evidences, the electronic evidences, one particular section under Evidence Act, which is 65B of Indian Evidence Act, specifically mentions the authentication of the digital evidences. Under this, there are various provisions. Suppose you are the owner of a computer and how do you get a copy of the data from your computer to consider it to be an evidence? There is a provision. And there is a public authority who's, who has the data in their custody and they actually copy the data and give it to you with their uh, certificate. So that is considered as a evidence. So all these provisions are actually given under 65, uh, 65 B of Indian Evidence Act. But let me give you a small situation and scenario and let us try to understand if this provision of 65 B can actually support this particular scenario. 
Suppose a mobile phone is seized in a police raid or a police arrest. 65B of Indian Evidence Act mentions that the data extracted from that mobile through a computer and signed by an authority uh, that you know this data has been extracted from this mobile only and through my computer karke. So this can be considered as a authenticated digital evidence. Matlab, a 65B certificate is now valid. But but whatever data has been extracted is the, the, the authority is only able to certify that the data which is extracted from this mobile phone has been given as it is. That certification can be given by the authority under this particular 65B provision. But the question arises, suppose in the whole mobile phone, there are n number of uh, photographs which are recovered. This photographs, See, in, as per the present scenario, if in case I found the mobile phone with some photographs, I submit to the court saying that these are the photographs found in the mobile phone. But this 65B of Evidence Act does not actually imply or express that such photographs or such multimedia data which you have uh, recovered from any such uh, uh, devices, how that can be authenticated, I could have uh, a mobile photograph. I could have a photograph in my mobile along with uh, Donald Trump this side and Amitabh Bachchan this side. The authority under this particular provision of 65B can only mention the photograph has been extracted from so and so mobile phone. But can this section right now has anything to mention that such photograph which has been extracted could also be examined? The law here is actually silent. So you might recover n number of audios, videos, or photographs, whatever from the mobile devices, but there is no such law presently which actually specifies as to what category of authentication is required for such kind of digital evidences. So this is something which the law is silent here. While digital forensic experts, we know that you know uh, what uh, kind of examination has to be done for the image, what for the audio, video. Uh, everything, but as per the law, there is no specific rule or a specific provision that this kind of evidences has to be compulsorily examined. So this is where the law has a gap between the reality of the scientific possibility or the uh, reality of the situations versus the legal provisions. There is a imbalance over here. Next, while we believe the courts actually strict, uh, strictly implement the laws. There, uh, I, I also mentioned about the aggregators not following even the court orders and the question arises as to is our law, what we are following, the, the laws what we are following are so lenient or the law what we presently are following uh, gives such a, you know, such, such, such a, a time, such a, uh, you know, courage for these kind of social media aggregators and the, uh, the companies to delay the process of investigation by not cooperating with the investigation agencies, when this becomes a question, I'm uh, putting across a specific uh, case of uh, a very famous case. Uh, in, in September, in uh, August 2017, uh, I think uh, somewhere in the uh, 17 and 16, the California witnessed a deadly attack where two shooters happened to kill around 14 people and they injured 22 people in the mass. While the investigators, uh, while police actually opened fire and both the attackers were shot, the investigators actually found the mobile devices from these two guys and one of the mobile device was an iPhone. And this iPhone was locked. So everybody believes Everybody knows how the iPhone is tough to be, uh, you know, open with the lock. And this lock of this iPhone was set in such a way that 10 consecutive or 10 attempts, 10, uh, you know, unsuccessful attempts uh, for opening the lock, the data will be erased. As a security feature, anybody can set uh, different kinds of parameters. So as for this photo, I mean, as for this phone was concerned, this phone was set with 10 unsuccessful attempts that the uh, data should go erased. So FBI requested the uh, Apple company to uh, you know, help them in the investigation uh, because it was a terrorist attack. 
Apple denied the request of FBI, stating that it actually violates their company policies. Here, Apple did not cooperate with the FBI. The FBI happened to file, I mean, have happened to approach the court, and court gave an order to the Apple company to facilitate the request of the FBI. And the request of FBI was like, you know, to uh, for the Apple to launch a separate operating system where this operating system can be, this operating system can be, uh, you know, uh, uh, loaded to the particular iPhone. And this data, which is an iPhone, can be hence retrieved. That was the plan of the FBI. However, the Apple happened to appeal before the appellate court saying that Apple will not cooperate in this matter. And by the time, by the time uh, the Apple uh, uh, you know, uh, was ha having the appeal before the respective court, FBI somehow were successful in breaking open that particular uh, Apple uh, device encryption and they were able to successfully uh, get the data. But the question here is the time taken, time taken for the whole process and Ultimately, the Apple as a company, as an aggregator, did not cooperate for the Facebook, for, for the FBI for their investigation in the national security case because the terrorist attack is said to be a, a threat to the national security. And even in these kind of cases, the uh, social media or this kind of manufacturers are not obliging for the investigation process. So the laws, what we are currently having is generalized law for different kinds of situations. But we do require a specific exclusive nature of law to deal with such kind of digital uh, evidences and digital forensic cases. I'm gonna skip the, out, uh, skip the uh, court order for this discussion. However, the question before us right now is the privacy versus the investigation process. That is the process to be followed by the investigation agencies versus the time. So all these three are having different, different challenges. So while uh, in the international uh, uh, discussions also we find the privacy is to be given as a right and we should, a lot of discussions are going on regarding the data privacy and privacy of the individual. And see, there are, there are objections for uh, people for electronic surveillance and there are objections for uh, face recognition systems in the public, uh, what the governments are trying to implement. Why? People are discussing about the privacy aspects. Does privacy aspects affect the investigation process? And does investigation process affect the time which is required for the whole investigation or whole conclusion of the case? So this is what the uh, discussion here is. Privacy, the process to be followed for the investigation and the time, all the three are highly important. There is no law which provide remedy to all the above. While a few law discusses about what is privacy, how the privacy is to be maintained, everything. So, and there are different procedures, uh, criminal procedure codes, which discusses about how the investigation is to be conducted, what are the documentations to be followed, who are the authorities, and other things. And the time, nobody discusses about the time. The no law here discusses about the time. Because for digital uh, investigations, time is also one of the essential factor for the investigation. because. Every data is stored on public domains, cloud storage, everything. And if the timely action is not implemented, such data cannot be retrieved effectively. So there are a few uh, companies which maintains backup, you know, imaging and different, different protocols. But question is time when it is the essence of investigation. That is very, very important to be maintained and no law presently discusses about the time. Implementing one among these three will compromise on the other. If in case you want to implement the time-based uh, investigation process, the privacy may be questioned. So vice versa, all these three are not actually uh, balanced in our legal system. However, investigation process is a duty. Managing or uh, maintaining the privacy is a responsibility of the investigation agencies, but timely action is a critical need. So if we don't have such laws which, which actually balances these three, we are actually not I mean, we are not in a uh, process of uh, having the good laws governing the digital practices. The role of digital phone six for law implementation right now, while the rules and laws mention a lot of compliances, digital phone six is an important tool which can ascertain breach of such rules and policies. 
So one of the recent uh, discussion which we are having is the uh, Personal Data Protection Act. I mean, uh, that is supposed to be uh, passed the bill and get to be seen as an act. But this kind of rules and the laws when it is made, that is having certain compliances, certain guidelines that this, 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 this is to be followed to maintain the privacy. Doing this is a violation. We discussed many things about this, but how do you ascertain if there was a breach in that aspect? Is only by digital investigation of such uh, you know, internal policies. So when you do the investigation digitally, and if you don't have good laws supporting such digital investigations, that whatever the law we implement, that will be not seen as an effective measure for the society. While so much of discussions are happening on privacy, equal amount of time and good laws are needed for digital forensic practices. While the next generation of evidences are all in digital format, the current laws in various countries does not support for a quick and effective investigation of data on cloud and on international servers. While every country which, in, you know, which enacts the law, that country's law will be governing that country's jurisdiction. But today, whatever the digital platform we are using, many companies do not hold the servers in their respective countries. And uh, it, it is uh, international servers and cloud storage is what we're discussing. And if this country passes any law, and how do you actually effectively get the data from the international server? That's a very big question. And since their country law might be different, our country law might be different. So which law actually uh, we uh, applied becomes a very big question. And we don't have such law which can be helping us for the uh, data on the cloud and international servers at this point in time. And various countries, not just India or uh, any other country, various countries are having the similar challenges right now. As a part of my uh, last topic of the discussion, where uh, there, there is a new trend of digital crimes and investigation challenges. The law, what we are following is of the older generation. By the time the bill is discussed and, the, and it is made as a law, there is a new trend of uh, the crimes, new trend of uh, practices are yet to be seen. And because by the time something is enacted and you know, uh, enforced, it would have already become the uh, outdated one because we are discussing about the digital world and every day the digital technology is changing rapidly. There is a need for international declaration of digital evidence laws because we see uh, different kinds of uh, declarations in the international level which could include uh, the uh, human rights uh, just like this. Okay, While every country has a situation right now to deal with the digital forensic laws, and not all the countries are maintaining the same uh, set of rules, same set of laws for effective implementation of uh, the digital forensic practices. So what we need in the international forum is that we need to have a common practice, common law, which every country, member countries uh, can follow. And this is where we have the requirement for the international declaration of the digital evidence laws that all the member countries shall have to implement the same practices in the interest of justice. Otherwise, one country has one law, other countries has other. So the laws are not, not meet, meeting with the uh, requirements for the whole investigation. And in India, when we want to see the next generation uh, of the laws, the Personal Data Protection Bill, which is now uh, being under discussion, which focuses on privacy, shall have a lot of work on digital forensics. And without a strong provisions for timely investigation, these cases will take a long time to be disposed. See, any law which is enacted, we can actually count n number of cases being filed before the courts. New act into 10,000 or 1 lakh cases every month before the respective courts. Because the laws are made to protect some rights. And for effective implementation of the rights, definitely people have to go to the courts. And before the courts and in the litigation process, one has to effectively present the evidences and since these evidences are digital in nature, when we don't have proper practices for digital forensics uh, you know, evidences and uh, exclusive provisions for the digital uh, forensics, so the cases like this gets into pending. And end of the day, everybody will start blaming on the judicial system, saying that if you file a case today, we only get the case disposed after 10 years. So it is a responsibility of everyone to now discuss about the common practices of digital forensic laws, which we are 
which is the need of this R. So with this, I conclude my uh, discussion of this R and the session is now open for discussion and further conclusions.